Now, though, it's time for today's perspective, and not many of us can say we've made supper for a baby elephant, saved a rhino that grew up to, well, not exactly get along with humans, or met a hippo that didn't like water. Well, Miss Francoise Malby-Anthony, who joins us on set now, she can. Miss Malby-Anthony, you run a wildlife uh, centre in South Africa, a project you began with your late husband, Lawrence Anthony, and you have a new book out all about those adventures, and it starts with the story, really, of how it first came about. Can you start maybe by telling us that, of how you adopted a herd of problem elephants? Well, it was by um, um, total surprise. Um, uh, we just bought Tula Tula, which is a, uh, well, we just named it Tula Tula, which means peace and tranquility in Zulu. And my uh, late husband, got, we got a phone call from a um, lady in Johannesburg, told her there is a herd of elephants. Uh, they are uh, they need to be relocated somewhere. They are problem elephants. Do you want them? It took us half a second and to say, OK, I think we uh, misunderstood or did not hear the word problem elephant. Um, they were uh, escape artists. I think that was uh, their special charm. And so we got them. 24 hours later, they escaped. Indeed. And, you know, a lot of work had to be done. It wasn't so much about you adopting the elephants as the ad elephants adopting you. Exactly. So, you know, tell us, how did that come about? Exactly. Well, uh, when they escaped, then uh, 24, hours, 24 hours after arriving, and then uh, uh, it took us a week to find them. Can you believe you can lose seven elephants? And uh, we got them, thanks to helicopter and all that, got them back. And that's when my late husband decided to uh, stay around the Boma, which is a one hectare enclosure, electrified, to get the elephants used to their new environment. And he decided to stay 24 hours around this Boma so that they would never try to escape again because the authorities said they would be shot if they escaped again. They represented a bit of a danger for the local communities, obviously. And that's, why, that's how he created that amazing relationship with uh, the herd of elephants and, above all, the matriarch that we call Nana, which means grandmother. Indeed, it sounds incredibly close. They seem to recognise each other. And even, you know, when your husband uh, tragically died, apparently these elephants actually came to mourn him. Exactly. It's the most amazing phenomena. Uh, the elephants arrived like a procession two days after he passed away. And uh, five o'clock in the afternoon, they all and they stayed for hours. And uh, as I always say, you know, interpreting the behaviour of elephants you can always do it from your own perspective, from your own viewpoint, which is a human viewpoint. And we knew the amazing relationship that Lawrence had with this herd of elephants. He was one of them. So elephants are known to mourn their dead. And uh, it's exactly what happened. This is what we know. Because mm. the elephants felt exactly, you know, they, they felt absence. something happened when he passed away. Because Tula Tula, like, uh, stopped. You know, the heart of Tula Tula stopped. But what's amazing, and they came back one year later, exactly same day, same time. And they came back the following year, exactly same day, same time. Oh, gosh. Which is an amazing phenomenon that you cannot explain in scientific terms. No, indeed, but it makes us think of that, uh, that uh, cliche that elephants never forget. It exactly. turns out that they might not. Now, you have lots of stories in your book about how, you know, we can, as humans, communicate with the other animals of, or, of, of this world. Um, but you do point out that they do remain wild animals. I saw yes. just flash up a while ago a picture of a rhino, and there was a story there where, you know, one of the rhinos you adopted uh, and helped to uh, nurse back didn't actually get on with humans in the end. And I like the way you put it. You say, well, you know, he got his stars and stripes as a wild animal. Exactly. You know, um, it's one of them is called Tabo. Now he's 11 years old, but he was one day old when he was found by humans. He was, uh, his mother was uh, uh, killed by poachers. So uh, that uh, rhino only knew humans. But then we got another um, baby elephant, eight months old. So it's a male and a female. The problem is still humanized. Mm. Humanized, they love humans. I mean, Tabo, look at him. Yeah, he's exactly, he loves humans. He wants to be next to humans. But at the same time, he's a wild animal. He will always be. So he's potentially dangerous. Indeed, and there's a story of him, you know, popping in to say hello to some of your guests in their tents, which all yes. ended well. But it kind of brought you just how close and curious they can be. Uh, but you say they're a wild animal. And indeed, when we're hearing about these majestic animals, Ultimately, shouldn't they be free? Shouldn't they, you know, your refuge, it's a refuge to protect them. Oh, no, they are free. They are on four and a half thousand hectares. 
and soon to be 8,000 hectares. Uh, because I was told, right after Lawrence passed away, I was told, you got too many elephants. You have, we got to have to make a plan. So we gave contraception to the male elephants. And which means, well, uh, now we're stopping the contraception because the um, plan we've got is to expand to La Tula, a further 3,500 hectares, which means after that, they can carry on making babies. And of course, that making sure they have enough space, but of course that reserve, in a way, is necessary, I guess, in a lot of countries because of the danger humans oppose to these animals as well. I'm thinking of Botswana, which recently lifted its ban on elephants. And I actually found a figure saying that a century ago, up to 12 million of the world's heaviest land animal roamed the continent. Today, the number is just half a million. So really a lot of danger in, in South Africa as well for these elephants? It's starting, yes, absolutely. Poaching is starting uh, up north mm. in the Kruger. Yes, absolutely. In Zimbabwe, they poison them. In, in, uh, the, it's it's, it's dramatic. The... And in Botswana, they want to kill or hunt them. Uh, Botswana has got a third of the elephant population of Africa because, they are, uh, in my opinion, there hasn't been any control of, you know, contraception. Uh, yeah is one solution, you know. Yeah, if, you if they're coming to, too close. In other countries, on the other hand, they kill one every 15 minutes. So it's very controversial, the decision of Botswana. Indeed, and, and you know, who's who's got the right to be there in the first place? But you mentioned there on your, part of your book's title, it says, The Elephant in My Kitchen, and it does tell us, I don't want to give away all the, 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 the good stories in here, but a baby elephant does wander into your kitchen one night. Uh, but you also say how your elephants have taught you courage and determination. And you are Paris-born, um, and you say that now, living in this wildlife refuge, you see perhaps some of the negative sides of Parisians, notably this individualistic take on life. You mean in Europe? Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the, the thing about uh, the elephants, they are the one who gave me the courage to carry on because uh, the, the, the example of the matriarch, the matriarch which leads a herd for the best interest of all. And uh, when you know elephants, their level of intelligence, which is beyond our understanding as humans. And uh, when you understand the altruism, the, the mentality of help, the compassion uh, that elephants are capable of, that gives you an idea that, for me, they are the perfect model of society, for society, for the perfect human society. Indeed, living and working as a community. Well, I have to admit that it's a fascinating read. Thanks so much for coming in and giving us a flavour of it, Miss Françoise Malby Anthony, with your new book out, An Elephant in My Kitchen. And readers will just have to go and get a copy to find out about that little one-week-old elephant uh, that lost the herd and was safely brought yes. back. Uh, that brings us to the end of today's perspective.